Yay! Back after three days hiatus. I am back. I was really busy yesterday, so forgive me for that. But anyways, let's just get in the review of a sentence of bookworm. Uh, when life gives you lemons, you know, it's a, it's a saying that I like to hear, because not only I like lemons, but I also like what it means, you know. When a situation that you don't like is given upon you, it is up to you to decide what you want to do with it. And that's exactly what mine did, you know. Of course, you will start out angry, mad, you know. You give this and things are going smoothly, and then someone just throws a wrench into your plans. And you're like, oh my god, you gotta kidding me. Now of all times, when everything's running so smoothly. And that's exactly what happened to mine, you know. She was excited, you know, things are going well with the picture book and everything. And then there's no dude comes up and just completely wrecks her library. And as most people will just throw a fit, you know, hunt the person down, and beat the holy hell of them. I will concur and I will agree. However, you are upon noble status. You must show yourself in a different way of light to the public. For especially when someone who's a true noble is before you and you're just blue robe. Despite you being technically a noble, you're still a commoner in their eyes. Which I discovered more and more things about this. Well, anyways, she was upset and wanted to attack until, you know, the head priest keeps having her go into her his room. And this is where I had to say, the comic session, when I was watching the anime. You guys need to stop. You, you gotta keep me in the comments like, oh, he's buying her, he's inviting her back into his room again. <laughs> his secret room. And like, Dude, it's not like that. They know it's not like that. We're making a joke. Like, come on, people. You're just making that joke, like, oh, you keep buying into her room over and over again, just wait until two years pass. <laughs> like, nearly all of me two jokes about this, but like, it's not like that, guys. But you know. Anyways, he was explaining how to handle the situation and to reorganize the books. This gave her a perfect opportunity to organize the books that she likes to by category instead of the way it was by, you know, date and stuff. So, as you can clearly see, that happens in our today society. When you go to the library, Barnes and Noble and other places, you'll see the library being like that. You go there and you see how things are organized by fiction, nonfiction, category. Then it goes alphabetical order, you know, from A to Z and stuff. The same old stuff. And as she was doing this, and got it done really quick. She knows that some of the books were not there ones that the head priest gave, and they were books of magic. Only because he kept them. And now, when she discovered it, she only to find out that, hey, you're not allowed to read these books because you have to be a true noble three magical books, you know, more status stuff that you just can't do, you know. A lot of them seem to be a lot of red tape and walls when it comes to just getting your hand on certain things because only certain people can have them. And I guess see why the point is, because having this kind of knowledge takes Require responsibility. But I digress with that. So, for you to be a true noble, you have to go to a noble academy. Past noble academy, then you'd be recognized as a true noble in the eyes of everybody else. Which good. So, she puts that off for now, and then she goes back to writing the books. She finally gets the books done very fast and more efficient now. You know, the kid is going to learn how to sew and do more stuff. So, it's good that she's helping out the kids with education and arts and crafts, give them certain skills so they can take care of themselves when things get hectic. So I applaud me for that. Good job. So she goes back to Bano and shows the book. He wants to sell the books off. It's great to make a profit, but sometimes you just want to do things. Just the sake of doing them, you know, the goodwill out of things, you know. And when you do turn a profit, some people kind of see you as a sell sometimes. It kind of reminds me of that one situation going on where this one celebrity did this YouTube show called Good News. And everyone loved it. I kind of liked it. You know, some positivity for once on YouTube, stuff being trauma and fear marketing. I see that right? <laughs> Anyways, I was happy about that. But then we found out that he sold it off to make a profit. And it turns out he won't be on the show. Someone else will be on the show. And you know when things is being into a profit, and which is nice that someone made money, but at the same time, that original feel-good thing about it disappears. It's gone. And then it becomes this hollow shell of a placement product that no one loves anymore. 
and you're wondering, why did I waste all that money to buy this? Because you thought it was a good idea, but you want to change it for some reason. But that's just another topic I just want to talk about. Mine just wanted to create the books just for children, you know, for them to have something on their own. And of course, she was planning to make books for um, the normal people, for the general public. She just wanted to work on that. She needed more time. She needed more materials, you know, things that they have yet to hear about. Even to the point where the head priest himself was impressed, but yet a bit cautious on her knowledge, you know. And it's something that a lot of easy guys do, you know. The the person who comes from the other world always brings the ideas to that world, you know. And the thing about it is that this show does it where most fail to do it, where when one person brings in so many ideas at a fast, rapid pace, because usually good ideas take years to perfect, you know, even have to cause some accidents for it to happen, you know, your intention is to do this, but something happens and then it goes this way, but that product that you did not intend to make becomes more successful for the world than the one you did want to make, if you get me, anyways. But however with mine, it's just... Success, 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 out the blue. Of course, it took her a while to get there. She had to make some brew improvising, but she still got there nonetheless. And because of that, it makes some people who are actually paying attention to it a bit weary, especially the head priest. Okay, she's making all these things completely fast, and it's very alarming. So why is she making all these things? It's a bit kind of cautious. When you see someone doing this kind of thing, it does raise a few eyebrows, you know, and... As a girl who just wants to read books and help out people, which is kind of her heart, it's something that a lot of these guys protagonists forget to do is be wary of the things you do. Especially when you have nobles watching you 24-7. People will say, okay, this girl has some ideas. She has large capabilities of mana. Why do you... Mm. Large amounts of mana. <laughs> and she coming up with so many ideas. You know, and she's getting that profit. Why? How? If she keeps this up, other people are going to keep their eyes on her and probably want to exploit her in some sort of way. Something that most easy guys always overlook when it comes to the writers, anyway. They always overlook that. They just have their character, even being a neat, somehow knowing you have to create all these things, but they don't have any prior consequences. It just always works out for them in the end. This way, it feels more like they're taking a the more smart approach to it. Where it's like, yeah, you need to be careful, you know. You gotta really think about these things before you just do them, you know. We were evolved around a lot of smart, greedy, evil people who do whatever they can to take advantage of you. So I hopefully it goes that way. I really do. You know, the male make mine think more clear of her actions and do things a bit s s slower in a way, you know. Don't be kind of ideas like that, especially just for a child. Either way, there those be such as probably her being from another world, or they'll think she's being spoken to by the gods and they're telling her all these ideas and they'll probably want to use her for that. Anyways, I think that's pretty much it I want to talk about, really. Besides the end part about her having to stay at the cathedral at the end in order to participate in the winter festival thing, whatever it is. Which she probably doesn't want to do. She wants to save her family. That's the thing she likes to do. But she has her disciples there that can clearly help her out. So, yeah, that's I pretty much where I want to wrap it up on today. Um, I'm going to do My Life as a Villainous tomorrow, then glip near the day after on Tuesday, which will get me back to Tower of God. So, yay, because right now I still got more stuff to do. I'm pretty busy doing some stuff. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon. We've got the background on Monday. Signing out.